This is a tutorial on how to use the solver feature on a calculator. Let's start by taking a look at our example. So here we have the function y equals 4x cubed plus x squared minus 12x. Now the situations that we'll use the solver for is when we want to find the value of an independent variable when our output is zero. Now since we're working with a third degree polynomial, we can potentially have up to three solutions, or three different values for our x variable. Now when using the solver feature on the calculator, it can only give us one answer at a time. Now let's try to use the solver to find our x values so you can see what I mean. First, in order to get to the solver feature on the calculator, you need to push the math button and then scroll all the way down to the bottom until you get to the solver. Then you could hit enter. Now at this point, the calculator already has zero equals written out for us. So we just need to type in the rest of the equation. So we'll put in 4x cubed plus x squared minus 12x and then hit enter. Now at this point, the calculator asks us what we think our x value is. And it also gives us some bounds. Now at this point, the calculator has our bounds set from negative one times 10 to the 99th power all the way to positive one times 10 to the 99th power. And in a sense, this is kind of like having our bounds set from negative infinity to infinity. Now it's important that when you guess a value for your x variable, that it stays within those bounds. For example, we could say that we think that the x value will be seven. But in order to get the actual answer, we need to use the solve feature above our enter button. Now since it's written in green, we need to hit the alpha button first and then hit enter. Now you'll see that the calculator gives us a value for x. But since this is a third degree polynomial, it's possible we could have other solutions as well. But we'll never know unless we check different bounds. So before using the solver, it's a good idea to know which intervals to use to look for your answers. So let's go back and do that. Now one of the easiest ways to know how many solutions we have is to take a look at the graph of our function. So let's go over to y equals and type in 4x cubed plus x squared minus 12x and then graph it. From this we could see that there are three points to where our function will equal zero. Now this first point on the left can be found in an interval that goes from x equals negative 10 all the way to about x equals negative one. So we could label that as our first bounds in order to get that solution. Now our second point, the one right here in the middle, looks like it could be found within the interval going from x equals negative one to about x equals positive one. So let's use that as our second bound. Now as for our last point, it looks like we could find it in between x equals one and x equals 10. So let's make that our third bound. Now that we know all the intervals in which to look for our solutions, let's use the solver to find them. So we'll get out of the graph and then go back to our solver. And now let's change the bounds to find our first solution. So we want it to go from negative 10 to negative one. So we'll put in negative 10 and then negative one and get rid of the extra numbers. Now when we guess a value for our x, it needs to be within those bounds. 
So if we choose a number like 10, which is outside of the interval from negative 10 to negative 1, we'll get an error. So we need to go fix that. So let's say negative 7, because that's in between negative 10 and negative 1. Now to get what the actual solution is, we'll hit alpha, enter. From this we could see that our x value is roughly negative 1.86. Now you may notice that there's an extra row that shows up. All it does is tell us what the difference is between the left side of our equation and the right side of our equation, which in our case is 0. Now let's try finding our second solution within the bounds of negative 1 and 1. So we'll go down to change our bounds, turn that into a negative 1, and then make this a positive 1. Now we need to choose a number that is somewhere within that interval. So let's just say 0. Now in order to actually find out what the real answer is, we'll hit alpha, enter. Now in this case our guess was correct, because our solution did end up being x equals 0. Now let's go on to find our third solution, which is in the bounds of 1 and 10. So we'll change our lower limit to be 1, and then our upper limit to be 10. Now we need to guess a number within that interval. So let's say 5. Now let's try to solve it. Alpha, enter. And that gives us our third solution, which is x equals roughly 1.61. And that's how you use the solver feature on a calculator.